afternoon, PV Nation. I'm Lauren Radford, and welcome to a very special episode of Coach's Corner. I'm here with the head PV AMU women, men's and women's golf coach, Coach Misha. Coach Misha, welcome to Herman Park. What's up? How are you? Doing good. Good. All right. So starting off, um, starting off on your pre um, PGA and of course PV career, what or who put you onto playing this sport of the game of golf? Uh, my dad started me playing the game um, when I was three years old, so just hitting in the backyard. I didn't play competitive, competitively until I was about 10, and then I went on to play um, high school golf, played college golf in North Carolina Central on the men's team, and then went on to play professional, so my dad was a big influence on that. It's always the parents that start us off. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> yes, yeah. All right, next one is, what defining moment in your life made you realize that you wanted to play the sport professionally? Um, I had always wanted to be an athlete. Um, I played four years of varsity golf and four years of varsity basketball. And then when I was at a point where I wanted to figure out which way I was going to go, I got offers for both. Um, golf was harder and there were less people that looked like me. So it kind of pivoted to that. I kind of wanted to be a trailblazer, a trendsetter. I really didn't know that at 17, but I feel like that's what it was back in the day. So. And going back to what you said about playing at North Carolina Central, I understand that you were the only female on the men's team during the time, which is, um, you know, not really heard of nowadays. But what was that like for you being the only woman on the men's team and how did that affect you in your collegiate career and going forward into your career on the tour circuit? It was actually a mix of emotions. So um, it was great to be kind of that trendsetter, to be the first to ever play, to be the only one, because I mean, I've, I grew up playing with all the guys anyway, playing with my dad and playing with his buddies. So to me, it was just a natural transition. Um, I did have a little issue kind of with the coach a little bit, but, you know, I kind of got through that and made sure that I kept plugging away and knowing that there was a bigger purpose for me than just to um, just to be there. So, you know, it's always going to be a little bit of jaw jacking from the guys you know they're thinking I'm not good enough until I, until it's time for me to beat them so it, it worked out all right that's always good and then the last one for this portion is what made you decide to want to actually become a coach either you know for PGA or as of right now for PV in the HBCU setting um honestly coaching found me so coaching was not really on my radar um I was content being kind of on the green glass side like Milana Dodge um, I was an assistant pro at golf courses and stuff like that. And then um, I need a big girl job so I can make some money. And, you know, I found out that the first job that I ever did for money was not conducive to my happiness. So when I got a phone call to say, hey, you ever thought about coaching? I jumped on it. So, you know, I took a massive pay cut to do it. But here I am, you know, kind of leading the pack here at PV. And I think that it's it's kind of come full circle. Especially since there's not too many, you know, black women who are coaches, let alone in a college settings too. That's pretty huge on that portion, I'm pretty sure. There's only two black women uh, that are head coaches in division one right now. It's uh, myself and then um, Jean Macon just got hired not too long ago at Chicago State making her the other one, so. It's a blessing too on that portion as well. For sure. All right. So moving on to, you know, your current career status. And starting back from when you first came to PV, you know, have been here for too long, leading up until now, have you seen a gradual shift in the team's dynamic in practices, workouts, and especially in tournaments? For sure. So um, last year was my first year, and, you know, it was definitely a learning curve coming into kind of the situation I came into with, uh, you know, kind of a lack of leadership, you know, the year before, um, which to no fault of the kids, they're on their own. But I wanted to make sure that I created a culture that everybody could succeed in. So that's kind of why, you know, we, and I run my program that we are athletes. So you all are athletes and you got to make sure that you do everything, train like athletes and be able to hold yourself accountable for your actions. And, you know, that's kind of the culture sh shift that, you know, I've been able to create. So it's more uh, kind of, culture first and then we'll worry about the semantics of it later yes ma'am i kind of want to go back to what you had said about the you know the whole order of the way that the team was ran before you had got here um was there any order or a authoritarian you know figure 
being amended before you had got here? And if it wasn't, you know, what did you do to come in to change that? Uh, I can't speak on what it was before I got here. You know, all I can do is speak on what I've done since I've been here um, and to kind of make sure that we move the needle in the right direction and try to get back to the championship ways, um, try to get the women's team a championship, trying to get the men back to winning championships, um, but making sure that we run the program on the up and up, whether it's with the NCAA, with the administration or anything like that. But at the end of the day, we want to keep it fun. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, positive lights are always the best way to go. Oh, for sure. mm -hmm. All right. What type of structure did you apply to help the program, you know, regain its balance to the way it is? Um, I implemented more workouts, a little more, more cardio, kind of um, more playing. Just, you know, it's really about holding kids accountable. Elite golfers want to be held accountable. They want to learn. They want to do the things that they need to do to be better. And at the end of the day, anybody that's trying to get better is always going to help the team succeed. All right. And then, you know, looking back at the 2021 2022 season for both teams, actually, how big of an advantage do you think the Panthers have for a SWAC title this year? I mean, 2021 2022 was before my time. So I started 22 23. Um, but, you know, I think that you know, we're in better physical shape. Um, we are, you know, of course the team is very different. So, you know, I pretty much lost a, a good chunk of the team last year. So, you know, we, I brought in, I think it was like 10 new people to the team this year that, you know, to make sure that we can move the needle and didn't have any kind of bad habits or anything like that. So, you know, I think that we are well equipped to make a push for SWAC on both sides. Um, it's just about how much we fight and, you know, how we how we handle it mentally. Yes, and moving on to the next one, because SWAC is literally about a week and a half away for y'all, uh, what plan do you have in mind for both teams to be ready to dominate? Um, it's going to be more mental. I think that we've put in a lot of work this year, whether it's on the golf course, off the golf course, in the classroom, because at the end of the day, you're students first. Um, but, you know, it's just all got to come together. There have been glimpses of greatness all season. So now it's time for it to come together as we get ready to conclude kind of regular season play and go into swag. Correct. Right. And so and this is going to be a little bit emotional for this portion. And, uh, you have four veterans who are getting ready to leave, you know, for some of them, SWAC is going to be their last one. PGA Works is going to be their last tournament. Um, you know, two team captains, of course, Shawnee White, Ron Darius Waters, of course, Olivia, and then Hunter Ramirez. You have them. How are you feeling as their time as Panthers being a part of your team is coming to a close? Um, all We actually have five because Abdel Raul is on the team and he's been an integral part. Like Abdel's got rings. So he was a part of those championship teams uh, before uh, Coach Jennings left. So, you know, they've all been integral parts in this. So it's going to be it's going to be a little emotional for me as, you know, Ron Darius Walters is um, great captain, great leader. Um, Shawnee Waite has been a great leader as well. Um, kind of put the teams on their back and, you know, try to hold the younger ones to a higher standard. So, you know, you can't really ask for that kind of leadership. You know, it's, you, just, you can't. Leaders are bred and built. So, you know, they have learned to lead. So they, they did their duty as followers and learned to lead in a, an effective manner. Yeah, that's right. You know, going forward, where do you see, you know, the Panthers golf team for both of them heading in the next few years and how or what do you think could be done to continue to dominate in the SWAC conference and get those titles back? It's, uh, it's been, it's interesting. Um, in the future, of course, we're always going to get better. And that's always the goal. So, you know, as, you know, the kids are coming out of high school and the transfer portal is real, it's definitely going to advance and we're going to continue to get better every year on both sides. So, you know, it, it's a stigma that, you know, you, you want to make sure that if you're on the team, you want to make sure that you're not getting left behind 
you know, because of the new crop, because these new these new kids are they're hungry. And, you know, as long as everybody's hungry, then we're going to make sure everybody eats. Yeah. That's right. Well, thank you so much, Coach, for joining us. And that's all for today on this very special episode of Coach's Corner. Be sure to tune in for the entire rest of the week as we will be here at the Houston Chevron. I'm Lauren Rafford. This is Misha Levinson. And I'm signing off with KPBU-TV.